And now, as I said in the intro, I'm joined by an expert panel, the one and only John Gilday, former championship winner and Donegal stalwart, and Gary McDade, former championship winner uh, for Glenn Swilly. Lads, thanks for joining us. John, you're, you're looking good there. I can just put you into that uh, team photo. You wouldn't have looked a mess. You're the man, of course, who kicked it all off in 2005. Where does this uh, title rank in all those glorious championship victories? Um, thanks, Bryn. I, I think I was just saying to Gary before we, we kicked in, um, every victory from a Neve Connell point of view is um, is as important as the last victory. And they, and they put as much effort into the next one as they did the one before that. And they celebrated in exactly the same way. So and I think the last couple have been surrounded with a, a lot of adversity in the sense that there was the battles against Gidor over three matches. And then obviously this one with the COVID and then going to extra time and going to penalties and the old rivalry with the car. So from, from the club's perspective and from the lads' perspective, it's a very, very sweet win. Um, obviously, the other side of the equation is a very difficult one for Kilcar to deal with. <clears throat> you know, losing in penalties, very unique, as you imagine. And you know, people say penalties are good, penalties are bad. And it's a very simple split down the middle. If you won, penalties are great. If you lose, losing by pair penalties is absolutely terrible. And there is the, the dichotomy that, that exists. But no, I'm very, very happy and, and very proud of, of Neve Connell and, and what they've done over the last number of years. And this one ranks up here as, as, as sweet as any of them. Yeah, listen, I'm, I'm, you're right. I suppose from a neutral perspective, the penalties thing, I think even in a soccer match, penalties is tough because a lot of players won't be used to hitting them. And you look at GA, who is striking the ball off the ground anymore? It's a very difficult position. For me, it's a bit alien to the game. It's a bit like the mark that, that's in there. I, I don't think it's part of a game. I still agree with the penalty in terms of if a guy's pulled down with a goal chance, you have to have that opportunity to get the three-pointer. But finishing games on penalties is tough. And, and Gary, myself and yourself were in the gantry there watching. Uh, you went for Neve Connell. I went for Kukara. So I have to tip my, tip my cap to you right in the end. I listen, I, I probably tipped him all year and you know it'll be interesting now Bryn going forward I, I think the likes of St. Unans and Guido in particular the other two of the big four will take a lot of heart from the game on Saturday night and they'll very much I think look at both teams and think both of them are very beatable like you know uh, ourselves including myself like we had talked up Neil Connell like uh, I just thought they were a machine in the league and I don't know, it was nearly a safety at first at all costs for both teams on Saturday night. And it's a pity, really, because I I know both teams can play really good football. Like, you know, Neil Connell, when they go out against teams who they know that they can beat, they don't play as rigid and as structured as they did on Saturday night. And the same for same for Kilcar. Like, Kilcar must have serious regrets. You know, it's Monday morning now. Like, you know, we're going into almost 48 hours, 36, 48 hours after the game. They had huge opportunities. In the modern game, Brand 1v1, I kept saying to you uh, uh, up, upstairs like when, when we were in the gantry, like, they didn't take the opportunities in extra time in 1v1s. They had 1v1s there, numerous occasions, numerous opportunities. What did they do? They went sideways with the ball or went back with the ball. So they did. You know, uh, 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 to me, like that's just going to be eat them. Eat them for so, so long. So it is Because county finals are so hard to get to. So they are. And when you get there, you have to maximise it. You can't play with fear and trepidation. Like, and both teams had that fear and trepidation within them. And it was almost a fear of losing as opposed to going grabbing the game by the, the scruff of the neck. Like, you know, it's it, like, like if you want to flip it around to the other side, suppose that, you know, Neil Connell probably had the high ball advantage in the full forward line. They got the two goals of it, and they, but they didn't use it half enough. Which you know, is half, like which is half, half their scores, really. You think about it, and you're on about low scoring games, two high balls, and that accounts for half half your scores, which was which was what was their was the major deciders in terms of uh, Neve Connell, kind of in many ways, kind of. Yeah, I suppose Neve Connell for me set the tactics because they are they play that rigid defense, so you got to mirror them. That's what's saying about John McNulty. The reason, and listen, we said it before, Gary, you, you seen I had tipped the draw there with the with old Paddy Power. <laughs> <laughs> nobody seems to want to win these games and if, the if a team I don't mean it that way but I mean if a team goes into a lead they automatically sit back and it's always going to come out when we said it how many times guys it's going to be a point either way if it's a victory and it ended up not being that way going, going right to penalties but I just thought for John McNulty that if they murdered Neve Connell right and both teams sat when you break forward then when you have your own McHugh's McLean's Brian McHugh's McBerties 
it just looked like if there was a team going to punch maybe that extra few holes, it should have been Kilcar. But I just think yes. actually McBerdy, McBerdy obviously really stepped up to the plate, uh, you know, as does Kieran Thompson on the opposite side. There's just something about Neve Connell, John, the, the team and the squad, you know, it's never about a player. Even though Thompson stood up the way he did, he's such a leader for them. You, you couldn't earmark him out. But it just seems like the whole team, there's no one like them in terms of the way, the system that they play and how they just stick stick to it, stick to it. That was make them so hard to beat. You know, if you're going to beat them, it's going to be a battle. It's going to come down to, to the inches and they're prepared to go there every time. Yeah, and I think, you know, that becomes a reoccurring theme. You know, when you start getting the mentality, as you well know, and you can go back to our playing days when you came across the Armas this world, and then there's nearly this aura around them that if you're in a dog fight with them, nine out of ten times, the, 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 their dogs are going to bark louder and get out the far side. And they've done that and the mentality and they've created this kind of siege mentality in there that they know that when they go in and they put their hand into the very middle of the fire, every one of them's willing to do exactly the same thing. And that's not just the 15 lads that are playing. That attitude permeates throughout the club and it's, a, it's, a, it's an ethos within the club. And I, I think it's very much driven from the 2005 lads, that core, and then Kieran Thompson's bringing forward. But you look at like the Leo and Ansi Thompson and Owen Wade and Marty Boyle and guys like that. And if you were going to war with anybody in any club, those lads you want in your corner because they never stop running. They never, ever give up. They're never beat. And then all the younger fellas coming through are coming through with that attitude as well. And they've seen Neve Connell won games that they shouldn't have won. Now, <clears throat> the last number of years have changed the, the I suppose, the, the outlook of the club in, in a lot of ways. Like if you look, say, four years back, Neve Connell had lost more finals than they'd actually won. And, you know, you could have gone into a situation where you were the team that lost more finals. But that all changed. And I think that new blood coming through to supplement the lads that were there already, like Kieran Thompson's probably one of the most exceptional footballers ever to come through the club. And personally speaking, I think he's he's probably underachieving at county level because I, I think he's been played in the wrong position. But he, you know, on big games, he always performs. And the rest of the team are all exceptional footballers in their own right. And 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 I suppose in a diff bygone era, you would see much more football from those lads. But now it's all about systems, structures, process. And if you look at the game in general, okay, Mabretti really stood out. Uh, Kieran really stood out. But I think what happened then was the big marquee players, I and I said this last week, Toshin, the marquee players and the really, really outstanding footballers were on the on the Kilcar side, the McHugh's and McBrady, those guys, they would be classified as the marquee players within the county right now. And I feel that Neil Connell got their matchups right. I think the Doherty's, Jack McKelvey, these boys, they shut down the other threats that Kilcar had. And then it became a it became a dogfight, and, and the then pressure, a dogfight. The pressure on the kick out, John, which was which was massive too. Huge, because, yeah, huge. Because yeah, Kevin was, you know, was, you know, they were struggling to get balls out there, and that panic kind of sets in. It's a dangerous thing, particularly just after the goal, Gary. And you were talking about there was there was a couple of big instances there. But John, just before we get to that, uh, the, the the point about Thompson there, where, where do you think he should play? Because I, I do get that, and I just wonder. <laughs> Sometimes, if you look at Patrick McBerdy, for example, when he was outside of McFadden and Murphy, he was never going to be the Patrick McBerdy that we've seen. You know, he needed to be the main man like he was for Kilcar. Where where would you see Thompson playing? And where do you think his best position is? Well, Thompson's best position is the middle of the park. Like, bar, you know, because, and, and, and speaking from experience, you know, wing half forward, you're going to get more attention. There's a lot of track and back. You, you know, a lot of times you're facing the wrong way. You're having to turn. Um, you know, and I see Thompson... Like you look at how effective Langan is breaking onto ball, coming through into space, getting the yard, swinging the boot at it. Kieran Thompson can do exactly the same thing, maybe even to a higher degree on the left hand side. He's a phenomenal fetch of a ball. He works tremendously hard, and I think he would get a little bit more latitude and freedom from that middle of the park role that would allow him to to utilize the skill set that he has that we're not really seeing at the wing half forward position. Mm, interesting, interesting. Gary, just to the penalty incident there, what, 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 what did you make of it? A couple of Calcar people were, were questioning it. You know, goals was going to be huge in the game, and and the two goals, I suppose, meant that Calcar were were often chasing the game. So when they had the purple patch, they only drew level, so they were leaving it open that they could never kind of get into that path for me where they were in charge of the game. What, what did you make of that first incident? Listen, I, I haven't seen a replay of it, but my gut 
right away was that it, that it was a penalty and that high ball got in like you know I remember us talking about it. the two boys inside um, Charlie and Kieran had six inches on the Kilcar full back line so they had and to me the delivery was really poor in the first half it was too central they got a better in the second half it was more diagonal but like first instinct was that it was a penalty you know and um, as I said you know it's, it's a huge bow to the string maybe that they didn't have when uh, a couple of years ago before the Quidor game that they didn't have maybe the, those big men now they have that and like it's, they just have a lot of strengths so they have across the pitch and an interesting wee one cause question for you Brendan Kieran Thompson became the first player in Donegal to one back to back or one back to back county titles as captain since who? <laughs> you know the answer? Do you know who's not happy with that answer? Harden. If you're listening in there, hard day. Poor Harden won the championship and then I was captain the next year. He was he's forever giving off about it. But <laughs> <laughs> right. Brenda Benny was Brenda Benny was the answer I heard. He was the last man right. to captain back to back to back team, so he was but is it to go now. I, th- I thought Kieran Thompson, you know, just when John was on in there, he won the Seamus McGeady last year. You know, he'll probably go on to win it again. Brennan, uh, God rest Seamus, he'll been proud of the performance he had last night and like last year, like the trilogy of Guido as well, to back that up two years in a row, it's absolutely massive and probably we're not maximising him in Donegal, so we're not, maybe he's out of position, but... I just thought, I think, I forgot to mention on Saturday, I, I, don't, I don't think I did mention, I thought Patrick McBurdy gave his best ever performance in a Kilcar shirt. You know, I've watched a lot of Kilcar over the years and he's done really well and he's carried them, but I thought Saturday night, he reminded me of Murphy and his pump. Them times we would have won the Locker Championships, Murphy would have just grabbed the game to the scruff of the neck and he had that bloodshot eyes and just fire in them and, and you, you could see that in Patrick, he was wanting the ball time after time and I was on about earlier, 1v1s, he, he went at them. I think Glenty's underestimated Patrick probably coming into the game. They probably thought that AJ would manage him quite well. And uh, Leo seemed to be marking that side and coming in as the second man. Didn't matter, Brendan. He, just, he went through the two of them, so he did. And sometimes if there was three there, he went through the three of them. I, I, my heart really went out to him because, you know, he left everything he could on the pitch. There was nothing else he could do to get Kilcar over the line. So he must be really sick this morning. Yeah, yeah, and listen, I dropped a wee message last night. Uh, do you know what, um, John? I was just Gary. You were mentioning about the at half time. Um, we probably seen the best of Kilcar in that ten minutes towards the end of the first half, and that I suppose what was in my mind that I thought they might age the game in terms of there was pace coming off the shoulder. They were getting through the Neve Connell defence. They were coming through the middle, kicking scores, and listen, we didn't see the best of Ryan McHugh, but that point just before half time, that was Ryan McHugh. I thought I'd see three or four moments from him in that game. You know, I think he's probably just so much football uh, uh, under the belt now. Yeah, the championship's a couple of weeks away again. But at that point, and and you mentioned uh, Gary that the that the the Nicole management stood outside for a long time before they went into the lads. And John, that second half, then you know, Neve Connell just bossed the second half and really put Kilcar under their under their shell and owned the game. And I was very surprised. I think if you're looking from a Kilcar perspective, for example, if you look to, to, to the winning and losing that game, there's a few points. But firstly, I think the start of that second half, after finishing the first half so well, what they were doing well, they completely stopped doing. Now, if you're going to play the system that they played at the start of that second half, that's what Neve Connell do. They sat and they worked the ball up the pitch. Whereas Kilcar were coming at pace at the end of the first half and they stopped doing it. And I said to you a couple of times there, Gary, they, they were on the attack and they turned around and kicked the ball back. You gotta go for yeah. it, you know. If you're going to yeah. win a title, you gotta go for it. But in many ways, John, am I taking away something from Neve Connell in that? Did they come in at half time and and right the wrongs of that final ten minutes and say we're going to change system here? We're going to put a press on Kilcar and we're going to keep them in. Yeah, I, th- I think it's a combination of both. Um, I think after the goal, you know, the game was kind of slipping away from Kilcar. Neve Connell had a couple of chances to go four or five up. And then it was, you know, everybody went at it. A little, little bit like the Mayo situation, nearly the game was slipping away from you. You just have to go for it at that stage. Because, you know, if, as we've seen from 2017, losing by a point or losing by 10 points, it doesn't really make any difference at the end of the day. And Kilcar weren't willing to do that, so they went at it. The other thing is I do think that what happened, Neve Connell went in and went, okay, this is plan A, plan B. 
this is what happens when Kilcar do A, B, C, and D. And Martin is so methodical, a bit like Gary as well when, when with Glenn Swally. They were fit to reset, restructure, and then set it up again and just go, okay, where are we making mistakes here and just lock it down? The other thing, I think a lot of this goes back to coaching and it's, it's permeating through the game in general. Um, and Gary pointed out early on that, you know, there was multiple opportunities for Kilcar to take men on one-on-one. But the game has got to the point right now where it's process driven. You're nearly told not to take men off one on one because if you turn over the ball, you're caught on the other way around. And if, if you're coached like that and that's the ethos that you have in your team, it's very hard then on a one on one situation to, to break rank in your own head because that's not the way you've been playing for the last five, seven years. So back in the day when you, know, you were playing, your first instinct was to take a man on. No matter what the situation, you know, 80 was the same, all those lads were the same. Whereas that has changed to the point now where it's about retention, holding the ball. And that's why Kilcar got so nervous on the kick outside of the equation, because every time you give the ball away, okay, Neve Connell will take it. They'll take three, four minutes out of it. They'll move it around. They'll move it around. They'll work an angle score. And that kills the game, kills, kills you as uh, on the opposition side. So I agree that when you go to a county final, you have to go for it. But, you know, most men outside of, you know, the Thompsons, the McBrady's, the McHugh's, which, you know, are allowed basically to do that at county level on a regular basis. If you even look at county fo- football, everybody else is shuffling the ball from A to B to C to D, but nobody wants to take responsibility, to take it on. And, you know, that's the one and the losing the game. And, you know, you ask yourself, why is that? But again, possession is so important right now for teams that they don't want to run the risk that they'll take the ball into contact and lose it. Yeah, and just a wee word. Uh, we were saying at half time he was going to help out McBerdy and he was going to help out Thompson. Kevin McGettigan, we we expecting him to chip in. We we won one. That was that was massive, uh, John. Have you been knowing them? No, the well, 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 if you look at a county final a couple of years ago, Aaron Thompson kicked the one and score from corner back. You know, um, you know, sometimes it takes a wee bit of 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 you know something different to do it. And and listen, he he, he took it on his shoulders and he did it, young player. Uh, you wouldn't anticipate it would have come from him. But uh, in a game like that, anybody that can chip in at that point in time is is, is going to be worth its weight in gold in a low-scoring game. Um, so, no, it was an inspirational score. And, you know, I, I remember a long time ago, Mark Crossan kicking a point from cornerback. And when things like that happen, you kind of think, yeah, probably going to be our day. <laughs> might be our day Gary just, John just touched on it there and I think it's a big thing in these games that even though the games are, are low scoring and there's a lot of possession the tension is massive because you know if a side gets a, just one score you know then that, that there's going to be a, a wall put up possession if possession is turned over you mightn't get it back for a good few minutes I think that creates a lot a lot of tension and even watching on as a neutral I can only imagine what it was like for John and, and the <laughs> Bonham fans and the Kilcar fans because at any any one mistake or any one score could be the winner. And you, you think the county football now, somebody gets a point or two points and there's there's five minutes to go, no big deal. You know, there's going to be ample opportunities to get scores. This isn't the case in these games. And I think, you know, a bit like the trilogy last year, even though they're low scoring, the, the tension in them is massive. Yeah, listen, and Kilcar, Bren, you know, they played Glenties at their game. To me, Glenties controlled the game and they want they put the game to the place where they want it to be. And to me, you can't play Nave Connell at that. They're too good at it. And you mentioned there the trilogy. They proved that last year. They grinded that, that out after three games. They've shown time after time in the runs in Ulster as well. They're able to win tight, tight games. So Kilcar probably you know played them at their own game. They didn't use if I asked you or John a question now, who's the best running team in the county? Both of you would say Kilcar. They didn't use their running game, so they didn't, they didn't maximise it. It was underwhelming, so it was. Decision-making just wasn't there. It wasn't at the, at the highest that night. A lot of responsibility was left to Patrick. I mean, you look at the Kilcar six league games, Bryn, I remember picking up the paper. I think I saw them once against Glenties, picking up the paper or, or reading online. So it after games and you'd see different players step up four, five, six, seven. I remember one day there was a, a Kilcar player had 10 points in a league game. None of them stepped up on the scoreboard. Uh, very few of them the last night. So they did. Ryan and Mark had two unbelievable scores. So they did. Ryan had one of his left foot. Mark had one member, Bren, right in front of us, just down below the gantry. It was a tight, tight angle. You know, like, I know it didn't go their way in the penalty shootout, but, you know, you can't, 
you, you can't blame him for, for the, you know, they contributed, they contributed on the scoreboard when it was needed as well. But maybe the other players didn't really step up when they needed. They didn't ask the hard questions often, you've Connell. Um, like, and Kevin McGilligan, I thought, was brilliant. So it was 1 1. For, they always talk about county finals. Like, you know, there'll be a non song hero come up and he had the 1 1 from corner back. And I was just thinking as well, you're on about the two high balls, the goal. If you remember, Brendan, Charlie McGuinness's point was a high ball that he fussed over, a drop down and he just fussed over the bar. So that's actually 2 1 off the high ball that came in. And to me, the game wasn't really played at a manic intensity. It was pedestrian. You know, no team brought any wild aggression, you know, uh, to it that to, to go and get the ball back hard. It was more standoffish and try and draw them in and suck them in and, and, if we, and try and lure them into a mistake more so as opposed to manic aggression, trying to get trying to get the ball back. But... Listen, there's no team. Gary, Gary, I was just saying, remember we were saying about it in the game, this was really a first round championship game. I'm just looking no, to, to the to the dominance of, of McBerty and of Thompson. You know, they were championship ready. They've obviously been in it. They've been in Ulster Championship. So the county players certainly had a, had a step up in terms of that intensity of game. So we didn't want to be too overcritical of the players because, you know, if you've seen a first round championship game, you'd say, right, that's okay. You're going to get on a bit of a run, build up a head of steam. So, it was a tough game, I suppose, for both teams to be maybe at their best. That's why systems maybe were were king here. But just on that point, in Mark McHugh's point, that was a black card as well. Was that not the moment for, for Kilcar to kind of seize that game? A man up. McHugh had that inspirational score. What, should that have been the turning point for Kilcar to kick on? Yeah, like, at, at a, it was Owen Wayne, wasn't it? The uh, black card at, at the time. Yeah, on Ryan right, McHugh. Right. Owen and Ryan. And he, and he was marking Ryan, you know. So so and and he was doing a good job on, on Ryan. And he, we were talking there off the air. Owen's been around since two thousand and five. So he has like. And then they changed that. They put Owen, young Owen Doherty, a player who I admire massively, came on then and, and marked Ryan after that. But you're you're hundred percent right. Fourteen v fifteen. I always say that now in football. If you watch inter county games, the, when the fifteen have it, you'll see them. Punish the opposition on the scoreboard. It's almost gone like rugby, Brendan. When the yellow card happens in rugby, when they're down to down to fourteen, they really go at them to make a count on the scoreboard. Kilcar didn't make a count on the scoreboard um, at at that at that stage. You know, Neve Connell had probably then. I talked about it before again the stronger bench. I mean, they finished with all the old heads on, so they did every one of them uh, that came on was nearly part of the two thousand and five setup. So they were. I actually counted. I was counting this morning. I, they call me nine subs. Kilcar made seven through ex- between extra time and, and normal time, and there was some players that came back on and off as well. And Kilcar just didn't probably have that strength and depth. Them more so, they they were taking lads off that they brought back on and they brought off when they brought on two of their old stalwarts, Haggerty and McShane as well. So so they did so. They just didn't maybe have the strength and depth. Can we, can we put that wide count down? To, as I say. Early, it's still kind of earliest in the season, or, or you know, there was quite a high wide count versus the scores that were kicked, you know. Yeah, I think I made it six now. My figures might be entirely accurate because you might miss the odd one. Um, during, I think I made it 16, Dave Connell, nine, Kilcar, like 16 is man, I know it's over extra time as well, but that's far too many. And as you said, I definitely would agree, you know, it was like a first round game, you didn't really know where players were at. Kilcar or the Glenties players seemed to. Uh, Cope with it a bit better, Brendan. Yeah. Kilcar plays. Kieran McGinley went off with cramp. Huge loss. Brendan, massive. Was having a brilliant game. Probably had Brendan, remember, we were talking about the point of the game. I took Kieran Thompson's point in extra time. Yeah. Andy McLean seemed to go off a, a senior and county player. Grant, who's out injured this year, he went off with cramp. I know he came back on again as well. Like, that, they're, they're two of Kilcar's top four or five players. So they are and to lose them. Like, they're ever replaced by. I would have nearly. I think I said it to Kieran O'Donnell at the time. I don't nearly pushed Kieran McGinley inside. I wouldn't have took him off. I know he was cramping up, but he's too big a player for Kilcar. Granted, he couldn't cover the, the acreage out in midfield, but put him inside. Right, because a few of the Kilcar subs come on were, were a bit light. You're right. You just needed maybe a bit of a ball winner. Maybe we're chatting too much about Kilcar because John has left us. He's, he's yeah. away off. <laughs> That's the, the, the magic of modern technology. Now, we better get this uh, uh, broadband sorted from him. He's not living too far from me, other I wonder what's happened up there. So, it, listen, John. It, 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 might, it, it might be out in the sticks and glen these. It might be away partying, Brendan. <laughs> maybe he is. Maybe he is. Maybe he is. Listen, guy, that, that's it. Didn't we? Listen, hats off to Neve Connell. You know, finally, we got this 2020 final read up. Uh, I suppose, in terms of it being late, 
11 months after it should have been decided on penalties. I mean, a lot, a lot of stuff on there. And listen, looking forward to the championship ahead. Gary, you were up at the Ulster Minor final just uh, at Friday night there. Um, you know, we the, the three teams, the Donegal teams, the minors, 20s and, and seniors, all in the preliminary rounds. The other two sides fell at the semi-final. Donegal got over Armagh in a tight game, but Tyrone were blazing a trail. Uh, Gary, we were going to always be up against it, but we hung on, we hung on the about the 50th minute before Tyrone got, got them a couple of goals and, and pulled away. Yeah, you know, in fairness to the lads, it was the toughest game our, that, our, that, our, that our minors came up against, so they did, and uh, they gave it everything in the night, and they just came up short against the better team. I mean, me and Oshin were in commentary, so we were, and, you know, Tyrone had probably the better players. I mean, you could see a lot of those Throwing a lot of stars, Bren, where we were more about the collective, so we were, and mistakes. There was a lot of a lot of mistakes, Bren, as in unforced turnovers, unforced errors, giving the ball to Tyrone, giving it certainly when the bit of pressure came on with far too many of those, and that's where the two goals came from as well. And the two goals, as you said on Saturday night, goals won games, so they do, and they definitely proved the turning point in that game. And Physically, Tyrone were massive friends, so they were, they were so, so physical. And I was talking to a lot of Donegal people in the game on Saturday night, and um, you know, they were saying, How often are we going to talk about this now about this physicality and our underage teams and us not being there with, with the likes of Tyrone? We need to start dealing with it, you know. Um, people were talking about the program cover, so they were big Rory McHugh, like he was a giant, so he was the, the midfielder for um for Tyrone so he was and then the week before there was a snippet in one of the local papers of your man the Armagh midfielder Owen Burnett against one of the Donegal fellas and, and again another giant says but you know just to put people's mind at rest I know there's massive work going on and those lads are probably a wee bit late since uh, the likes of Aaron Kyles and Carl Lacey came in you know mm-hmm. they're only in the job maybe in the last year or two so it probably happened too late for that current minor group I think um, maybe our current under 14 slash 15s, I think you'll see the result of that work when they they're, get to under they're, seven, they're, they're going to be in the gym flat out, flat out. Listen, that's, we're nearly out of time there. John, thanks for rejoining us. I just want a quick word to finish it off. We were congratulating Neil Connell. Just that that moment at the end there and Thompson speaks for for Michael Jack, um, you know, was was a real uh, uh, touching moment. And Bradis was was very on him as well, you know, the tear in his eye, but, but, but a lovely uh, end of the evening and, and, and memory of Michael Jack. I yeah, uh, listen, it's you know, small communities and Michael Jack was a huge, you know, huge part of Donegal football in general, because I don't think you could have gone the length and breadth of the country that people didn't know Michael Jack, but a, a very popular and prominent character within the Neve Connell Club represented Neve Connell with distinction down through the years. And like, you know, from you know, from what I can remember back in the day when, you know, when we were still using Kodak cameras and you had to go and develop the film and, and they were in black and white. Yeah. Michael Jack at an under 12 match would be along the side taking pictures. And he just loved the game and he loved people and people loved him. And I think, you know, there's a lot of things happening in the Glenties over the last 12 months. There's like we had Fildy as well, who was, you know, president of the club for a long number of time, passed away, God rest him soul. You had Michael Jack the same way. This is the club centenary year. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of emotional stuff going on around the club yeah. this year. And the very fact that in a centenary year, we've, we've locked away a league. We've locked away the, the championship. Better luck. You know, you could won two championships in the one. I know there's a lot of work to be done. But, you know, Michael Jack, Fildy, you know, Paddy Eamon Boyle, another huge club man. And I think it's great for those people to remember at a time like this because, you know, this, this team would be nowhere without those men. Sure. And there's an important part of the club as Kieran Thompson is now. So it's it, it was very poignant, and uh, Kieran did a great job in remembering that. Well wrapped up, John. Um, listen, thanks very much, and enjoy the celebrations there, Gary. Thanks for joining us and giving us a point of view this evening on the deal debate. I'll see you both soon. All right, Brad, Talk thank soon. you. Thanks, Ben. See you, Gary.